All right, so now's the moment of truth. We're gonna run this program and see if it does many of the things that we want or if we just get errors. Um, and if we do get errors, we're gonna talk about how to address them. So here we go. I'm gonna pop over to terminal. Once again, I'm going to hit this. Okay, so that seemed to work very, very quickly. Uh, I'm a little surprised, so I'm wondering if maybe actually nothing happened. Um, so let me flip over to Finder here and see what happened. Okay, so did not work, and the reason why I know it didn't work is because... Oh, no, wait, sorry, it did work. <laughs> uh, but if I look at my CSV, I can see... Whoops, wrong one. You can see that it is notably empty, right? So something didn't quite work here. Um, let's see, what did I, so start station ID. So I wrote my, I wrote my uh, headers okay, um, but something got messed up in the meantime because, uh, well, it's not matching anything. Okay, so now I didn't get any errors though. So one thing I wanna point out here, um, and actually this is a good example too, of the case where uh, I didn't get any errors and I know that because nothing was output here, right? It just came back to this command line prompt. Um, that means it didn't encounter any problems, but as you can see, it also did not do the thing that I wanted it to do, which was actually uh, filter and uh, write that material. <laughs> <laughs> so what it means is, yes, my program technically works, uh, but it doesn't work from the perspective of accomplishing the task that I set out to. So now it's time to start debugging. So one thing that I could do here is I can use a print statement and I can say, um, uh, in conditional. So one question that I can ask myself is saying, hey, is it finding any rows in which it believes um, the start station ID is, oh, <laughs> never mind, I know what the problem is. Okay, so this is very often the case, right? I start debugging, I, and then all of a sudden I see what the issue is. So, a row start station ID equals what? 72, what color is 72 here? 72 is orange, indicating not that it is text, but that it's a number. Well, here's the thing. Everything that Python reads from our data is going to be, it's not going to do any um, type inference on it, right? So just like OpenRefine, if I want it to see something as a number, I then have to tell it to treat it as a number, which means that in this case, I was saying, hey, do any of them match the number 72? And it's like, nope, only strings here. So what I need to do is actually say, make sure that you're matching on the string, not on the number. So I am guessing that that was my problem and the reason why that went so very quickly uh, and also didn't produce what I wanted. I'm gonna make sure to quit out of Excel just so that I don't um, get any sort of conflicts with having a file open and trying to write to that same file um, again while it's already, while it's still open. And now, again, having saved my changes, flip back to terminal. So now you can see it's taking a little bit more time. And the reason why it's taking more time is because it's actually looking at that data and writing the new file. Now, again, it doesn't look like anything is happening. This is the no news is good news kind of thing. Um, when I come back to that command line prompt, what I know when I don't see anything is that A, I didn't get any errors. B, when it comes back to the command line, everything has finished and I can now examine um, the output of my efforts. And indeed, I see something that looks much more um, promising. <laughs> uh, and here we go. Everything that has start station 72. Um, realistically, I would probably open this in open refine, but um, it's just easier to pull up Excel quickly in this case. Okay. So uh, what I haven't done is I haven't produced a count or anything like that. Um, I certainly could do that in the process um, of pr producing this file. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. So if I wanted to just filter down to a given start station, that would be a really simple way to do it. Now, we probably want to do a little bit more with this. And so I am going to sort of 
leave this file, really what I'm going to do is um, create a new file with this as the base. So I'm going to do um, a save as on this file. And I'm going to call this city by Parker parser regex. So I mentioned that a reg regular expressions are something that are available um, in basically every programming language. Um, and certainly they're available in Python. And they really look quite similar to what we saw in OpenRefine as it happens. Um, uh, but the way that we use them is slightly different. Um, this is also going to mean one thing that's important about this is that what I want to do now, and so I'm going to come back up, and now that I have my new file, um, I'm going to modify my um, my program description. The created file that create that contains all the rows for that month that um, that include the start station ID of 72, and also test whether the end station name includes West Street, right? Again, arbitrarily decided this is an example. Um, and add in a new column that shows true or false based on the results of that test. Okay, so in this case, one of the reasons why I just saved a new copy, you know, saved my original file with a new name is that um, I'm doing a lot of the same things, right? I, you know, downloading the data or sorry, not downloading the data, I'm opening the data. Um, I'm creating a new file. I want to make sure that my output file is different, right? That that output file name is different. Um, otherwise, I'm going to just overwrite the, the file that I just created with my other program. But now I need to do something a little bit more particular, right? Rather than just saying, oh, hey, yeah, go ahead and, you know, write, um, you know, go ahead and, and just write the entire row. I actually want to modify that. So here's where I'm going to apply my regular expression test. Um, and I'm going to create a new row that is basically the same as the original row, except it's going to have this new column that has true or false based on whether the end station ID um, has... Uh, based on whether the end station ID has um, West Street in it, right? So in order to get this done, the first thing I need to do is tell my program, hey, I'm going to be working with some regular expressions. And in that case, the regular expression, in this case, the regular expression library in Python is called, we, we refer to it as by RE, right? It's short for regular expression. And um, as I mentioned, the way that we handle regular expressions is a little bit, it's different. Um, and so I'm going to call this West Street. Actually, I'm going to call it has West Street. Okay. So what I actually do here is um, I'm going to tell the computer to compile, which means sort of evaluate, right, interpret my regular expression right at the start of the file. Um, and uh, I'm going to pass it the regular expression, which in this case is going to be the very basic, right, West Street um, with my dots and asterisks around it because I just want to catch it anywhere it shows up in the file. Um, so that's fine. That gives me a way to test my regular expression, right? I've defined what my regular expression is at the top of my file. I'll be able to use this later. Now, the other challenge that this presents is that I can't actually just use the dictionary writer anymore. And the reason why I can't do that is because the dictionary writer really only writes entire rows and I need to modify the contents of my rows. So I'm going to be using a slightly different um, recipe. This one's called CSV writer. So instead of dic dictionary writer here, I'm just going to say csv.writer. Okay. And that one doesn't require that I tell it what the header is, but, um, Instead of having this, because I don't have to pass it the header in the beginning, I have to write the header separately and tell it what the header should be. And so in this case, I'm just going to use my right row recipe and I'm going to pass it that header row sort of manually, if you will. It's really not manually, it's just in a different place. Um, and that's going to be how, again, I get my header row in there. Now, 
Um, again, actually a lot of this doesn't change because my city bike reader hasn't changed at all, right? I'm still using the dictionary reader for that. I'm still looping through each time. I still want to know if start station ID is 72. But instead of just saying, hey, start station ID is 72, we're all good, I now need to do a little bit more work. So the first thing that I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to create a space to hold my modified row. So again, I'm not just writing my original data row again, over again. Um, I need to create a new row because it's going to have an extra column. And a row in this case, a CSV, is just a list, right? It's just a comma separated list of values. So I'm going to create this em an empty list, right, which is my square brackets, indicates an empty list. And having now tested that I'm in, that I'm in something that I want to write, I need to go through every single value, really every column in that row and append the value, push that value onto, make it onto my list, right? Add it to my list. So to do that, I'm going to say for a call in um, a row, actually I can say in, it's really city bike reader field names, right? So again, how does this know what a call is? So I've intentionally named this a call to remind myself that the thing that I'm looping through is actually the column headers. And where did my column headers come from? Well, they come from this city bike readers field names property, which again is something that was created by this CSV library when I told it to use my source file um, as an ingredient to the dictionary reader recipe. So in reading that source file, it said, oh, that first row, that's the header row, and I'm going to assign that. I'm going to assign that to a property or a variable called field names, and that's why I'm able to use this field names property throughout the rest of my program. Um, so for every column that appears right in my row, um, what am I going to do? Well, if the um, if the value of if the current field name, if the value of the field name is end station name, and again, where am I getting this? I'm getting this from the actual column headers, right? If uh, that is, sorry, um, actually, it's not that, it's what I need to do is, uh, actually, this is a weird structure that you use for regular expressions. So um, I need to test this end station name um, to see if it if it contains West Street. So I need to use my um, regular expression to test whether the value contained in end station name for a particular row has West Street in it. So first, what I want to know is <clears throat> if the current column that I'm looking at is end station name, right, then what do I want to do? Well, the first thing I want to do is I want to actually make sure that I add that column to my row. Okay, so I'm going to say new row append, I think that's it, append a row. Okay, so what am I saying here? What I'm saying here is um, what I want to do is take the new row, I want to push onto the new row, the value that appears in my current row at the current column. Okay, I know this is kind of tricky to get your head around in the beginning, um, and I promise it will get easier. Um, but basically, that's what I'm saying, because a call right now, I know that the value of a call is end station name. And uh, if I want to know the value, if I want to get at the value that is in my current row at end station name, I use these square brackets. So here, just imagine that a call substitutes for that. Imagine substituting end station name for a call. And now it is what is the value at the current row for end station name? Well, I don't want to lose the end station name just because I'm testing for this other thing, like whether it concerns, uh, contains West Street. So I want to make sure that I actually add that on. And then the next thing I have to do is, the next thing I want to do is say, um, if it matches West Street, then I want to add true, right? Because I'm creating a new column, right? A new entry that has true. Otherwise, I want to have it add false. Um, so I'll come back in just a moment and we're going to wrap this up and uh, hopefully you'll see
how simple it makes applying regular expression to a Python file.